as yesterday we were turning the wheels of progress. Until the frost stopped it all. But wait, how did the world even get like this? Today we're exploring the only steampunk post-apocalyptic survival city builder, Frostpunk. We're here to ask only the most important questions like, how does the automaton get into the new London crater if you haven't rebuilt the outpost elevators yet? I have been enamored with Frostpunk ever since I first picked it up on Steam. Not only for my love of survival and city builder games, but frankly because its setting is just so cool. But just how realistic is this game's world? Could such a thing even happen? What do volcanoes, nuclear warfare, Snowpiercer, and climate change have in common? All of this and more in this episode of Ronin Speaks, your tangential learning experience. Exploring the science of Frostpunk. Before we get started, we need to establish some base rules. There are a multitude of different factors that can cause ice ages, such as continental drift, Milankovitch cycles, or solar activity cycles, etc. Additionally, other alternative theories like the Earth drifting away from the Sun, alien interference, or an asteroid impact will be also ruled out. For simplicity's sake, we will consider all factors in the Frostpunk universe as consistent with ours, with the divergence being somewhere in the 18th or 19th century. This is a Earth and environmental science video, not an astrophysics video. Those might make for interesting topics to return to in a future video. However, this video will focus on a natural phenomenon known as a volcanic winter. To contextualize this, Let's use an example people might be more familiar with. Eat. Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Nuclear winter is a hypothetical consequence of a all-out nuclear war in which the dust and debris kicked up by the explosions coupled with the ash from the resulting wildfires would block out so much sunlight that the earth would fall into a state of global cooling for several years until the dust would quite literally settle out after the initial detonations. Thus making the planet even less hospitable for survivors. If the radioactive contamination and physical devastation wasn't enough. In a quote attributed to the Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev, the survivors of a nuclear war would envy the dead. The surprising thing is that volcanic winters like this have actually happened several times, even during modern recorded human history. In fact, as recently as 1991. Following the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, global temperatures dropped by around half a degree Celsius between 1991 and 1993 even overpowering the warming effects of the El Nino event and anthropogenic greenhouse gases during that time period. Two historic eruptions that most directly inspired and correspond to the events of the game are Mount Tambora and Krakatoa. In 1883, the Indonesian volcano Krakatoa erupted with a volcanic explosivity index of 6, a force estimated to be equal to about 200 megatons of TNT, over 13,000 times larger than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and four times larger than the largest thermonuclear bomb ever detonated. Global temperatures dropped by about 1.2 degrees on Celsius on average. By comparison, the IPCC considers catastrophic climate change as 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures. This cold temperature anomaly wouldn't return to normal until 1888. Similarly, in 1815, another Indonesian volcano, Mount Pambora, 
erupted with a volcanic explosivity index of 7, making it the largest explosion in recorded human history. This caused global cooling over 3 degrees Celsius for around 3 years, and caused what is known as the Year Without Summer in 1816. This cold and gloomy atmosphere caused widespread famine and disease, but also inspired Gothic literature like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and Lord George Gordon Byron's Vampire. Additionally, the atmospheric effects of the volcanic eruptions can be seen in Edvard Munch's 1893 painting, The Scream. In a more recent example, the eruption of the Tonga volcano on the 14th of January 2022, with a volcanic explosivity index of 5, was the largest eruption since Mount Pinatubo in 1991, and was also the largest explosion of the 21st century. According to NASA's estimates, it was hundreds of times more powerful than the first atomic bomb. The sheer power behind these ratings can't fully be appreciated without understanding how the Volcanic Explosivity Index works. The scale is logarithmic, meaning that each interval on the scale represents a tenfold increase in the volume of product, eruption cloud height, etc. The scale runs from 0 to 8, with 0 being effusive, non-explosive eruptions, like in Hawaii, all the way up to 8 being the largest explosions ever seen on Earth. There is only evidence of just 40 VEI-8 eruptions in the last 132 million years on Earth, so don't count on one of these anytime soon. Such VEI-8 examples include Yellowstone and Mount Toba, an eruption hypothesized to have nearly caused the extinction of Stone Age humanity, but that is a story for another day. Volcanoes don't just cause short-term global cooling simply by the debris they launch, but also due to sulfur dioxide emissions. Sulfur dioxide could be thought of as an anti-greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases like methane or carbon dioxide work by transmitting light while retaining heat, which in turn warms up the atmosphere. Conversely, light-colored objects like ice, snow, or clouds reflect light rather than absorb its energy as heat. This reflectivity is measured by a property called albedo. Aerosols like sulfur dioxide are also very hydroscopic, meaning they collect moisture, thus creating more clouds. Or, if it was around a population center, you would call it smog, which in turn would block out even more sunlight. The proven effectiveness of such aerosols to cause global cooling has led scientists to debate the intentional release of aerosols into the upper atmosphere in order to counteract global warming. Quite literally, chemtrails. This concept gone wrong is the premise behind the world of Snowpiercer. However, volcanic winters only have short-term climate effects, as over time the dust and ash settle out and sulfur dioxide dissipates as it reacts with water vapor, and converts into sulfuric acid before falling to the earth as acid rain. Volcanic winters, like the 1816 Year Without Summer, caused notable crop shortages and famine in the years following the eruption. This brings us to a new, unique question. What exactly does the rest of the Frostpunk world look like? But that is something that we'll have to wait to hear the answer to in part two. Until we meet again, this is the Ronin.